everybody welcome back to a brand new series on the channel in the 132 scale uh, build series and this time I'm going to be doing the high-tech version of Special Hobbies 132 scale Hawker Tempest this is the Mark, Mark 5 version uh, this is the second uh, issue of the high-tech Tempest from Special Hobby uh, the first one had quite a bit of resin in but this one has been upgraded fairly recently, I think last year or maybe the year before, to include uh, an engine in it as well. So uh, that will give us plenty to do later on in the build. But I'm going to start off, as usual, for the first part of a 32 scale build series uh, with the cockpit. So we'll get over, get some of the resin and plastic sorted out and we'll make a start on this cockpit. Okay, so there's an awful lot to, to be going at in this kit. This is the Quinter Studios uh, interior decal, which I'll be using later on in the video. We've also got, as part of the kit, a set of HGW uh, seat belts, fabric seat belts. And as well as the plastic, we've got an awful lot of uh, resin parts. Uh, as I said in the introduction, the uh, version that I'm doing here is the second iteration of Special Hobbies High Tech Tempest. The first one had the resin in but not the engine and uh, we'll be doing that later on in the series. So uh, we'll see the resin a bit later on when we come to add some of it to the cockpit but uh, let's get the instructions out and uh, see what we've got to do first of all. Uh, it's a long time since I've uh, built a Special Hobby kit and uh, the instructions are a little bit different, they look a little bit crowded but uh, they're perfectly legible, the drawings are good so hopefully we won't have any trouble locating and assembling the parts so I'm going to start cutting out some of the plastic and then we'll identify the resin that we need for this first step of the build the uh, recess detail on the kit is really nice, it's not overdone the uh, rivets and panel lines aren't too deep and overstated so that'll be good and they should come out nice under a, a panel line wash later on in the build A warp on this fuselage but uh, it shouldn't cause any problems. There's a couple of ejector pin marks but they're not going to really be visible but one of them's got a bit of flash on this forward one so I'll get rid of the flash. Actually we might see that forward one so I will fill it. These uh, side frames to the cockpit um, do need quite a bit of cleaning up. There's a little bit of flash on them which you need to scrape off really with uh, a sharp blade, a number 11 exacto blade gets into the corners of these. And just a swipe takes those pieces of flash off. And it's worth doing uh, because if you've built a Hurricane Tempest or Typhoon before you'll know that uh, the frame inside the cockpit is pretty visible so it's worth making sure that that's nice and clean. Apart from anything else, the aesthetics of cleaning parts up like this 
uh, it also makes sure that you've got the part as it was designed and you're going to ensure or you're going to increase your chances that the part's going to fit properly. <laughs> on some of these modern kits that are produced these days the tolerances on the fit's very fine and a little bit of flash on the part is just enough sometimes to prevent uh, the proper fit. So it doesn't take long to clean these up, just five or ten minutes. But it's time well spent. So at this stage I'm just preparing what I think are the major components of the cockpit and building sub-assemblies where I think I can. And what that means sometimes is that uh, I deviate from the instructions, which I can't thoroughly recommend to you, but it, uh, it's just the way that I do it. You've just got to be a little bit more careful if you're building in that way that uh, you don't go too far and uh, get to a point where you can't fit apart or components or sub-assemblies won't go together. <sighs> but I just like to get as many parts assembled as I can uh, ready for painting rather than assemble painted parts. So I'm really looking to get as much of this interior framework assembled as I can and then assemble all the various detail parts, the boxes, switches and things like that once the main assembly is all together. So this is the uh, bottom frame in the cockpit and we've got the control column going here and also the rudders, pedals uh, fit to the front as well. So uh, at this stage we've got some resin uh, footboards to fit to this part. So we'll crack open the box of resin and find those two parts. There's quite a lot of cockpit punk components in this bag, so I'll keep them all out. So we've got a warp on these boards. Um, so I'm going to have to straighten those out. And the way I'm going to do that is just to use some warm water. And normally uh, resin uh, will find its original cast shape. If you do that, it's got some sort of memory, really. And hopefully we'll be able to straighten those up. So actually I used a hairdryer there to straighten those up. And uh, the, uh, hopefully they'll stay nice and straight. For some reason there isn't a hole in the back of the adjusting wheel, which makes it a little bit awkward to fit the part, so I'm just going to drill it out. This is the elevator bell crank that fits to the back of the control column. So as you can see the whole control column is made up from resin. And we've got a bit of photo etch to add to this as well later on.
I think I'll start to assemble the framework now. I can put the side consoles in once this is painted the base interior green. The footboards uh, fit on top of this assembly but uh, I'm going to leave those out, paint those separately because I think it's too much to ask to get the paint into all the nooks and crannies there so I'll leave that off for the moment and uh, as you can see the cockpit's building up to quite a busy looking assembly. So uh, this is a two-part assembly. We've got the bulkhead itself and this which is the back of the seat with the armour plate on it. Now I'm going to struggle to get paint in there between those two so again I'm going to leave that into two separate parts. But uh, eventually this bulkhead fits onto the back there of the cockpit module, the framework. One thing I have noticed about the kit so far from uh, early impressions is that some of the pins, so these locating pins here on the back of the frame, are a bit too big for the holes in the bulkhead. So to get those to fit properly I'm going to have to drill them out a little bit. Okay, so I'll just put that to one side now, uh, then uh, I'll move on get the side consoles put together now. And at this stage I need to consult the Quinter Studios instructions because quite a lot of the parts in the set are for the side consoles. You get uh, a set of seat belts in the Quinter Studios set as well, but uh, I'm going to be using the HGW fabric ones, they just look a bit better bit more realistic than the 3D printed ones. Okay so let's deal with the starboard console first of all. Okay so we have some detail to remove from the plastic moulding here. So if you're using the Quinter Studio set do this before you uh, assemble these side frames it'd be easier. So that's the starboard side wall ready. All the reliefs being removed from it. All these parts receive one of the Quinter Studios decals. So uh, hopefully that should look good once it's done. We'll uh, see what we've got to do with the port side wall now.
Okay, now the uh, throttle quadrant. Now in the kit we get two parts. We get the plastic part from the original release and we get this resin replacement. The uh, Quinta Studios parts which cover this throttle quadrant are sized, I think, for the plastic part rather than the resin one. So I'm going to ignore the resin part and apply the decals to the plastic but I will use the resin throttle levers later on. Okay, I'm gathering uh, the sub-assemblies here. And uh, the next thing I want to do is to do the instrument panel, then I can uh, get these all primed and we can start to do a bit of painting. So this is the compass which I think I'll leave off because it might be quite difficult to paint that once it's installed here just below the instrument panel. I'm just checking the fit of this instrument panel and actually this side console is interfering with its location. So I'm going to remove that which I'll do by just applying some extra thin cement. That should loosen the bond. And there we go, that just pulls off nice and cleanly. Which leaves the question, how does this fit? So it looks as though there's a butt joint up against the bottom of the instrument panel. So with the instrument panel loosely in place, hopefully I'll get this in its correct location this time. So I'm just going to leave that in position to set and then hopefully when we come to fit the instrument panel finally it should line up with that side console. So uh, whilst that's drying I'm just going to come back to the footboards and the control column finish this off. There's one or two pieces of photo etch to attach to this and then we've just got some fine wire to attach here to the back of the control column. They represent chains which uh, control the ailerons. So get this small photo etch set out. These tiny pieces of photo etch are just a couple of little brackets that go either side of the chain housing. Tiny little detail, I don't know how visible it will be. Let's get some wire for the chains themselves. I'm going to use some uh, 0.3 millimeter nickel silver rod. It's actually 0.33, but uh, it doesn't really matter. So 
It's a nice bit of detail on those uh, control column chains. So uh, that's all ready for some primer now, as is all the other sub-assemblies that I've been building. So we'll do that and then uh, start to get some paint on. We need to take care at the moment with these brackets on the back of the seat because they're on a pivot so there's room for them to move or at least this bottom one and if you just glued that without checking you could end up with those bars in the wrong position so I'm just measuring them off onto the side frames just to make sure that when the seat goes in those uh, four location points are going to go into their respective holes in the side frame. We've got some lovely detail on this uh, resin seat. The back pad's nicely detailed and uh, we've even got some stitching at the top holding that to the steel frame. Okay, so the next step with these is to give them an overall coat of the interior green. And for that I'm going to be using uh, Mr. Colour H364, which is the uh, proper interior green for RAF aircraft BS283. These are the last few details to go on the upper part of the side wall. These are all going to be painted black. This top section above the green is black. And uh, as you can see, I've finished painting all the green elements using that uh, Mr. Hobby colour. And I've also given it a coat of gloss varnish, some Tamiya X22 gloss. And that's so that I can apply a wash to the uh, green parts. I like to do that over a gloss coat, otherwise it tends to soak into and stain the matte paint. It doesn't give you the effect that I want. I'm just filing off the detail of these. This is the radio selector. So this is going to have one of the Quinter Studios decals on it. I just need to smooth it out a bit. I'm 
And I thought there'd be a problem there, that's why I'm just checking the fit of this. The instrument panel fouls on that radio in the position that Special Hobby tell her to fit it. So I'm going to have to move it back a little bit. So I'll just put it on with the panel in place. Then we should be okay. So as I said, the sequence that I've done here is to paint the interior green, then a coat of X22 gloss, uh, then a weathering wash or a panel line wash. Then I'll flat coat it and then do the black areas and some of the detail painting as well. So uh, panel line wash next. So I'll use my AK panel liners. And I'll use the uh, one for the green colour. So that's 2071 AK 2071. These AK washes are enamel washes, so they'll come off with some white spirit. we've uh, let this panel line wash dry and remove the excess the uh, flat coat will be followed by a uh, dry brushing just to highlight the high points so the wash is designed to capture the low points and uh, just add the impression of shadow onto these parts Okay, so I think that's uh, captured just about everything. I'll leave the wash to dry and uh, the next step is to just remove the excess before giving a coat of flat varnish to these bits. So we're cleaning the wash off now with some cotton buds and Sometimes you do need a little bit of white spirit to clear these if you've left it to dry too long. But uh, this AK wash dries fairly quickly. So if you just keep an eye on it, you can just catch it at this point when it will come off without any additional uh, thinners or cleaner. And the added benefit at this stage is that the wash will adhere to the cotton bud a little bit and it will stain the paintwork around where you're working. So in that sense it's a little bit more versatile than the Tamiya panel line accent colour. If you go too far with this stage and find that you've taken too much of the wash off you can just go back in and touch it in with a fine brush but that's uh, enough for me it's just probably a little bit difficult to pick up on camera but it's just stained the green added some detail to the uh, stringers and ribs and so on and just brought out the rivet detail on there 
so uh, that's nice. I like these AK washes. So the next step for these, uh, I'll just leave them to dry thoroughly and at that point when they are dry I'll give all these assemblies a coat of matte varnish ready for some detail painting. So as you can see the uh, flat coat there was Tamiya uh, Lacquer Flat Clear and uh, that gives a really nice even smooth finish. So now I can do some dry brushing on the green and for that, uh, for British cockpit colours, I like to use this XF14 Japanese Army Grey. So it's basically the same tone as interior green but uh, quite a bit lighter. And we'll just do a very gentle dry brush uh, just to pick up the uh, highlights on some of these parts. The detail on this resin seat is really nice. Uh, this dry brushing makes it pop. It's a really nice stage, I think, dry brushing, especially on these really finely detailed resin parts, because as soon as you do the work, you can see the detail that you've not spotted before just uh, coming out. It sometimes takes a bit of time to build this effect up because the trick with it is to just have the tiniest amount of the highlighting colour on the brush. And because of that it does take a while to get the effect to show and it's difficult to pick up on camera as well but uh, it is there. That's the green dry brush done. So now I'm going to mask off the upper part of the cockpit sidewall and paint that black. And whilst the masking's in place, I'll apply the dry brush to the black areas as well. So earlier on in the video I mentioned about the risks of deviating too much from the instructions and this is a case in point where we've got this cylinder here, I don't know exactly what it's for, but it's a really tight fit between the bottom of the cockpit floor and this triangular frame here. Of course all that was assembled and uh, I've had to really squeeze it in and in the process of doing that I've scratched it so I just had to touch it up a little bit. But uh, it could do with being fitted before this triangular frame goes over the top of it. It'd be much easier. But it's in now and uh, touched up so it looks okay. This is Tamiya Gloss Aluminium in uh, their lacquer range which I use for the uh, top part of the control column. And then the grip in black. I 
After the flat black, I'll uh, use some German grey just to pick out the raised detail again with the dry brush. Okay, that should uh, be enough. Okay, so that's all the painting done for this stage. So now I think we can afford to put some of the Quinta Studios decals on. Uh, now I've put some of these on before on my CR42, the last 32 scale build that I did. And it was suggested to me that uh, the glue on the back of the decal isn't really strong enough and to reinforce it with some PVA. So uh, that's probably uh, safe, even though I've not had any problems with the CR42. I will just uh, have a little bit of PVA. I'll use some canopy glue just to fix these in position. So if you've not seen these before, they work just like an ordinary decal. Just uh, cut them out, soak them in some water and then apply them. But as I said, I'm going to reinforce them with some of this uh, white PVA canopy glue. This decal here, number 13, is the uh, rack of flares. And uh, Special Hobby actually provide uh, some clips if you want to display this without the flares in position. But I just think it just adds a splash of colour to the interior. I'll just wait for these decals to dry before I put the various switches and knobs on. And in the meantime, I'll do the instrument panel. So you can see I've gone around the edges of the panel with some flat black. And uh, now I'll put the instrument panel decals on.
And I think these uh, instrument panels from these Quinter Studio sets are absolutely sensational. I couldn't do anywhere near as good as that using decals or hand painting. And I know that uh, there is uh, one view that it's cheating really to use these things. And it certainly uh, requires a lot less skill to get a much better result than hand painting or applying decals and so on. But there are plenty of other areas where you can uh, test your fine painting skills uh, without having to try it on a very prominent part like an instrument panel like this. I'll carry on using them wherever they're available. I think they're great. The thing I like less about them are the levers because being a decal they're a bit flexible and it's quite difficult to get them to stand up. To attach these levers I'm just using a dab of CA. It just sets them a bit quicker. The other application or the other situation where I think CA works a bit better with these decals is on a fairly sharp curve like on the top of the throttle quadrant. It's quite a lot to expect the decal to go over without any help so just a tiny little speck of CA just bonds it down. So uh, because Special Hobby gave us a resin quadrant with all the levers in resin, I can fit those to this uh, plastic part with the Quinter Studios decals on. Okay, we'll tackle the seat belts next. So for that we need the HGW fabric seat belts and all the buckles that uh, are present on the photo etch set. So these can be a little bit fiddly to deal with, but there's a trick or two uh, that you can use to make them a little bit easier. I'm going to start off by fitting the lap belts to the seat and the uh, shoulder belts need to be fitted to the armour plate here at the back through these uh, rails. So we'll do the lap belts first. These belts uh, are fabric but they come on a paper backing so you need to separate them from the backing. And what I like to do is just to roll them up between my fingers like that. Otherwise they look a bit pristine on the seat. And then a little trick just to make threading them easier is to just thread them whilst the buckle's on the fret. 
but you need to have two methods for doing it. It's fairly straightforward where you've got the fret connections at the side of the buckle because you can just put the belt straight through and then cut the buckle from the fret afterwards. But on these you've got the fret connection in the way of threading the buckle. So what you need to do in this case is to just cut the fret connection and fold the buckle up a little bit so you can get access to it and then you can just thread the buckle through and you've got plenty to hold on to. And to fix these I use CA. It's much quicker than trying to use PVA although PVA will work. Just takes a little bit more time. And then just fold the belt around the buckle. And once it's fixed, we then cut the other fret connection off. And that's the buckle threaded. There's a bit of noise outside, I'm sorry, but um, it's the time of year when all the hedges in the fields get trimmed down. And that's happening just outside the shed. So we've got a bit of disturbance, unfortunately. But there's nothing to be done about it. It's essential work. So they're ready to go on the seat. I've already done the other one. Do the uh, shoulder harness next. As you can see, these belts are pretty fiddly to put together, but I think they're worth it on the final model. They look more natural than photo etch, and certainly they're better than the Quinta Studios ones that are provided in that set. The only thing extra that you've got to do with them sometimes is that, uh, like in this situation, you've got the belt that's folded over. And they're only coloured on one side, so I'm going to have to go in and just touch that up. 
It's the same with the main shoulder harness where that folds over. I'll have to paint that in. Okay, just some final assembly now. I've just been round and painted all the last bits and pieces, the levers and wheels and things like that. So I'll start to put all this together. So the armour plate plugs in like that. This is the trim wheel. I nearly forgot the compass decal. For me this is the most tense part of uh, building a cockpit which is gluing the belts on to the seat back. If this doesn't go right uh, you've got quite a job to straighten it all out again. Once they're in, leave them alone because uh, if you fiddle around with them, you'll end up with uh, super glue all over your freshly painted seat. So uh, that looks fine. That's all I'm going to uh, do in this first episode the uh, cockpit, but that's taken three full days really to build that. So uh, that's enough for this week. And uh, in the next episode, I'll be fitting the cockpit into the fuselage halves, joining the fuselage and then probably we'll move on and get some more of the airframe done. Okay so uh, that's gone uh, okay. Uh, there's one or two tricky areas with it which I hope I've pointed out uh, during the video. Uh, this definitely isn't a kit that you can just throw together. The parts do need a bit of preparation with them, particularly the location holes, uh, which can be really tight for some of the pins that uh, are on the parts. So my advice if you're building the kit uh, is to test fit and then test fit again just to make sure everything's going to go together smoothly. Because on a framework like this you don't want to be pushing and forcing the parts together, you're just going to break the whole thing to pieces. So that's all good, I'm happy with that and in the next episode, part two, I'll be fitting the cockpit 
into the fuselage. Uh, I've had a quick test fit of this and again the tolerance is on the fit's pretty tight uh, and I've struggled a little bit to get the fuselage to close up so that'll be something for us to look at uh, early on in the second episode. Uh, but hopefully if we can sort that out we'll get the fuselage joined and I'll go on uh, probably to build the wings and maybe even get the airframe together. So uh, that'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. It's uh, a bit of a break time for me uh, over the next uh, fortnight or so. So uh, I won't be posting for a while. Uh, but if you put your notifications on just to make sure that uh, you pick up uh, this next episode. And probably I'll be doing a little bit more work on the Bismarck as well. So hopefully I'll see you for one of those next episodes. And uh, in the meantime, look after yourselves everybody and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.